All right, thanks for coming everybody. We have Kim Smith from the West Virginia DEP and she's based in Charleston and she is going to have a presentation about the miracle of the Marnock. So thank you. I'm gonna mute right. myself now and take it over, Kim. All right. All right, guys. Well, I hope you're excited to be here. I'm excited to be here. I'm looking forward to talking about the miracle of the monarchs. Let me share my screen here. There we go. All right. Can everybody see that? We good? All right. Okay. So we're going to talk about the miracle of the monarch butterfly. So the monarch butterfly, what kind of creature is it? Is it a mammal? Is it a bird? It has wings, so maybe it's a bird. So what is it? Does anybody know? It's an insect. And how do we know it's an insect? Well, because the scientists have classified it as an insect, and its fancy, super fancy name is Danaeus plexippus. Can you all say that? Danaeus plexippus. That is its very fancy name. So if you wanna impress somebody and somebody says, look, there's a monarch, you can say, nope, that's a Danaeus plexippus. It's a very fancy Latin name. And you will be very impressive if you use that name. So we know they're insects, they're in the class Insecta, the order Lepidoptera, which means butterfly, the family Nymphidaliae, and the genus is Danaeus and the species is Plexippus. So we have a very special name for each of our creatures and the monarchs is Danaeus Plexippus. All right, so how do we know it's an insect? Well, what is an easy way to look at a bug, to look at a creature and know that it's an insect? One of the most easiest ways is to look at how many legs it has. Now this picture only has four legs. I think they forgot to draw two, but all insects have six legs. So we know it's an insect because it has six legs and it also has a head, a thorax and an abdomen. So all of their body parts are separated into three distinct body parts. The head, which is where the eyes and the mouth are, the abdomen or the thorax where the wings come off of and the abdomen which is where they lay their eggs from now uh butterflies have two sets of wings the top one is called the forewing and the bottom is called the hind wing and you can see on there the wing veins and that brings the circulation from the main part of the body up to the wings and that's how they um, get the circulation to their off to their wings. Now, another amazing miracle of a butterfly is they have what's called a compound eye. Now, a compound eye has many, many, many lenses. You can see each little lens within here. They have many lenses, which allows them to see all the way around them. And they get many pictures from all the way around them and they their brain puts them together kind of like merging photos together and they can see then they have way better sight than we do they can see behind them they can see beside them they can see in front of them they can see above and below them which is way more than we can see the other amazing thing about a butterfly is it has what's called a proboscis you can see this long thin Thing. It's like a tongue, it's their proboscis. It's how they eat their nectar. I don't know if you can see where, if it's being blocked by the uh, things here. You can see their proboscis goes out into the flower and gets their nectar. <clears throat> so that's their proboscis. It's basically a giant fancy tongue that drinks the nectar from the flower. So those are some of the amazing things that make it an insect and some of the amazing things that make the butterfly miraculous. The other, one of the other amazing things is the life cycle of the butterfly. All insects have a life cycle. They have eggs, larvae, which is the baby, 
and they then metamorphosize into the adult version. So here we have eggs, the caterpillar, then the caterpillar form is, we also call it, like I said, a larva. And then the larva forms a chrysalis, which we call a pupa. And then the adult metamorphosizes within the pupa and hatches out as an adult. So here's the adult and they only lay their eggs on milkweed plants, only milkweed plants. They lay their eggs on no other plant. And the reason is because the milkweed has toxins in their leaves. So it makes them a little bit poisonous to predators. So one of the most amazing things about the caterpillar is it doesn't have near as many predators. It's a nice, fat, juicy bug, which birds and other creatures would love to eat. But because of the toxin within the milkweed, it keeps them safe from many predators. So the female butter, so the female monarch will lay her eggs on a milkweed plant, only milkweeds. And she will lay her eggs there and the egg stage lasts about four days. And you can see the little tiny, tiny eggs. And then after about four days, there's little tiny caterpillars and they start eating the, um, the uh, milkweed leaves. And then in about 10 days to two weeks, they will start forming their chrysalis. So here is a big, nice juicy um, uh, caterpillar that would look very tasty to a bird, but the bird sees these bright markings and it's a warning that says, don't eat me, I am not going to taste good. And so the bird won't eat it or the creature, the other creature won't eat it because it knows it's going to taste bad. And uh, so that's why they eat the milkweed. And so that's the only thing that caterpillars will eat. The monarch caterpillars will only eat milkweed. So we go back to the life cycle. So after about two weeks as a caterpillar, they get nice and big, and then they form a little J. They get on a, a branch and they form a little J like this guy right here. And then they secrete this nice, what we call a chrysalis or a pupa, and they secrete it and make it themselves. And it's like a little changing room where they go in and they spend about 10 days in here metamorphosizing to an adult. So we go from the larva to the pupa or the chrysalis. And here's what a chrysalis looks like. They're very pretty and they stay, uh, they have the nice bright colors of the um, caterpillar on there to keep other creatures from eating them as well because they're very vulnerable now that they're in this stage. So they don't wanna be eaten in this stage. So they have the colors on there to keep them protected. And then after that, we have the stage where they hatch out, the chrysalis turns transparent and they hatch out of the chrysalis and their wings are wet. So their wings have to dry. So they're all folded up. You can see how they're all folded up and their wings have to dry. And then they become a beautiful butterfly. Now you can grow your own monarch butterflies. If you have a milkweed garden, when my son was little, uh, I had a friend who had a milkweed garden and he gave us eggs and we put the eggs in a big um, aquarium on the leaf. We put lots of leaves in there. Every day we put fresh leaves in there. So after four days, the eggs hatched and out came the little baby caterpillars. And we put fresh leaves in every day and they munched and munched on the um, milkweed leaves. And then they grew up into nice big caterpillars and then they formed their chrysalis. And then we watched them hatch out of that. And then we let them go. So that was a very fun thing. My son loved it when he was little. 
So I highly recommend doing something like that if you are interested in nature. So what do adult monarchs eat? Well, they will eat any nectar from any flower. This big orange bush is called a butterfly bush. They love the nectar from a butterfly bush, hence the name. They will eat nectar from any bright colored flower that they can find. And they use their proboscis to dip into the nectar and get the nectar out. Doesn't look like there's much nectar in there, but there's plenty for them to eat. So what then the life cycle of most adults is about two to four weeks. So most butterflies, their full life cycle is about two and a half months long from egg to adult to mating, laying eggs, and then dying. But this is the other miraculous thing about monarchs. There is a third generation every summer. There's three generations of monarchs that come, lay their eggs, grow into adults, then another one lays their eggs, grows into adults. And then the third generation is something called a Methuselah generation. Now the Methuselah generation live up to nine months. And so what they do is they actually migrate to Mexico. They travel from here's up here's West Virginia. And if you see a monarch here in late August and September, early September, late August, you will see that monarch will be heading to Mexico. And he's going to travel 3,000 miles, 3,000 miles to get to Mexico. Now, just less than 50 years ago, we didn't know where these butterflies went. They just disappeared every year and we had no idea where they were going to. It wasn't until less than 50 years ago that we found out they were going to Mexico, to the jungles of Mexico. And so you can see that just in my lifetime, we've learned something new about the butterflies. So there's always something new to learn in science. And to this day, we don't know how they figure out how to get there. It's like going to the beach without a map. They make it somehow they have an internal GPS that tell, they've never been to Mexico, but somehow they know how to find Mexico, how to find that forest where all of these other butterflies are. They don't go just to Mexico, they go to a very specific forest and millions of them hang out in the trees and we're gonna see a really cool video of them hanging out and uh, hibernating in the winter time. So once the winter is over, this Methuselah generation will then come back out into the spring and migrate back up here and lay their eggs and start the process all over again. So all of the uh, monarchs we see up here um, in the late summer will eventually end up all the way down here in Mexico. And then in the winter time, they will stay there, they will hibernate. And then in the spring, they will start their journey all over again. And they will know exactly how to get there without a map without GPS, without anything. They know exactly where they're going. So what are some of the threats to monarchs? Well, we have deforestation, which you can see this picture right here. If you um, tear down their forest, they have nowhere to go. We have habitat loss. We have extreme temperatures and we have pesticides. Pesticides will kill the um, eggs and larvae of the butterfly, the extreme temperatures will cause habitat loss as well as um, building roads and houses and, and cities will also cause habitat loss because they need way stations along the, that 3000 mile journey. They can't do that without food. Just like when you go to the beach, you gotta stop and fill up on gas well, these butterflies have to stop and fill up on nectar. And the more we build, the less 
um, opportunities there are for flowers for the butterflies to land on and get the nectar. So they got no fuel. And so they end up not being able to complete their journey and they die before reaching Mexico. So what can we do to help protect the monarch butterfly? You can plant a milkweed garden. Um, you can get seeds of a milkweed uh, and plant a garden, or you can plant a butterfly garden so that you create your own little way station, your own little gas station in your yard. And you all, uh, and that's gonna be sending you all t-shirts for your participation in camp. And with that, I'm sending everybody a little seed packet for a butterfly garden. So next spring, you will be able to grow your own butterfly garden and hopefully you will be able to see lots of butterflies. So what we're gonna do now is watch a short video about the migration of the butterflies because I can't do it justice just to tell you there's millions of them down there. It's really, incredible, so I think it'd be better for you all to see it yourselves. These distinctive Can you hear that now? butterflies, the monarchs, right. are seen over large swaths of the United States. But every winter, they disappear, and we had no idea where they go until 1975. And then we discovered they were vacationing in Mexico. Right here, this is one of the reserves, Rosario. It is magical here. So that's pretty amazing, I think, to see all of those butterflies, millions of butterflies and they all go to the same location. I mean, they don't just, you know, pick a forest and one goes here and one goes there. They all go to the exact same forest every single year. And we don't know how they manage that. We don't know why they do it. So that is one of those great scientific questions that if you're interested in insects, that maybe when you go to college and graduate, you can figure out how they manage this because we don't know. And it would be awesome one day to find out how they managed to do this. So um, does anybody have any questions? About our butterflies. So can you see? the butterfly here. Now, how do we know it's an insect? How many legs does it have? Six, that's right. Very good, Savannah, it has six legs. And it has a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. So that's how we know it's an insect. And the other way we know it's an insect is it has several life stages. It's not just an adult, it isn't born out, looking like it's going the same way, you know, like a deer is born, mammals, um, they uh, look pretty much the same as they're going to look as an adult. Well, these guys look completely different than they do as an adult. So they start off as little tiny eggs and then little tiny caterpillars. What's the other name for a caterpillar? Do you remember? Very good, larva, that's exactly right. And then they form a chrysalis. Do you remember the other name for a chrysalis? Very good, very good guys. You all are smart, you paid attention. That's right, it's a pupa, very good. So does anybody have any questions for me? You can take yourselves off mute and ask questions if you want. Um, uh, amazing thing about miracle butterflies. 
Well, no questions. So I guess I answered everything, huh? Does that mean it was a good presentation? You have no questions. You don't need to answer anything. <laughs> it was a good presentation. So on I'm sorry bucket. I didn't tell you about the volume thing at the beginning. Oh, I didn't okay. know you were going to share a video. I, I didn't know. Ahead of time. It didn't occur to me that there was a special way to do that. So I'll know next time. Yeah, no problem. On my bucket list, one of the things that I want to do as uh, and someday in my life is go to the great migration down there in Mexico. My cousin did it and she said it was one of the most amazing things that she'd ever seen in her life. Yes, I do have a butterfly garden. I have a butterfly bush in my front yard and butterfly, I have monarchs. I see monarchs every year and um, I do a monarch count as well. So we're trying to keep track of how many monarchs are around. So I do a monarch count and that's something you can do. Um, you can get in touch with the West Virginia Extension Office and they will um, help you learn how to do a butterfly count. So if anybody had, wants to do that, just ask Annette and I will get you in touch with the Extension Office and you can do a butterfly count every year. So I count monarchs every year and let them know how many monarchs I've seen. Has anybody seen any monarchs this summer yet? No. Nope. I've only seen one this summer. Last summer, I saw about 15, but this summer I haven't seen but one yet. So- My dad um, has, uh, in Pocahontas County, he has a lot of milkweed plants that he sort of put on the side of his garden, so. Yeah, there- Now in your perfect. pollinator garden, do you have like, some puddles or something for them to drink from or just the flowers? I have um, just the seeds. I have a, a seed pack that I'm going to give Annette that she's going to send them. And um, oh, you raised one a couple of years ago. That's awesome. That's great. Uh, so. Like if they plant it and they want to make their own little pollinator garden. Did, right. Have you they seen people? Do it. They, is it just flowers or do they put? Yeah. Puddles this, nearby too. Is that something you're? No, it's to just do? a. Yeah, uh, it's just a flower garden. It's just a bunch of wildflowers. Yeah, wildflower okay. seeds. Sure. So they just need to uh, till a little small section, and then they can grow the um, flowers themselves. So, all right. And Beth, in, in our pollinator garden, we um, we include like the kids like painted um, little stones, and we also have like little plates that have uh, rocks and then we try to put water on those right. plates. Uh, we add the rocks so that the insects and the, and the butterflies are able to land on the rocks and take a sip of water. Uh, but you can have lots of fun with your garden. And Kim, that's super cool that you're gonna send out uh, the packets. Yeah. Uh, that's really awesome, yeah. thank you. Yeah, so I thought that that way everybody could have their own little pollinator garden and uh, enjoy butterflies themselves and get to see, and it'll attract all kinds of butterflies. It's not just monarchs, but it'll attract all kinds of butterflies. But if you're looking to attract just monarchs, I would go for the, um, oh, did you all grow monarch butterflies in school? That's awesome, very cool. Uh, I would plant milkweed and that will definitely attract monarch butterflies. They will flock to it and lay their eggs on it and you'll have lots of uh, larva and uh, you'll be able to watch them grow and metamorphosize right before your very eyes. Does anybody have any other comments or questions? I'm glad to see that you all um, have done, have raised monarchs before and have people who have got gardens before, that's great. The more way stations we have, the more opportunity the butterflies have of making it through their migration without dying. So um, that's awesome. Yes, thank you so much, Kim. And just a little uh, tidbit, uh, the monarch butterfly is uh, the West Virginia state butterfly. That's right, I forgot about that. Thank you, Sarah. Yes, you're right. That's their state butterfly is the monarch because we see lots of monarchs here in West Virginia. So that's pretty amazing. Thank you. Definitely. I forgot about that. Yay. No worries. I enjoyed this presentation. Thank you. You're welcome. So any other questions or comments? And I will let you all go.
thanks so much for joining me on the miraculous life of the monarch. And I hope you all learned something and had some fun at the same time. And I hope next spring you'll be able to plant your gardens. Thank right. you. Thank That's you. Cool. Thank you, Kim.